Hello and welcome to the Sidescape Gaming Podcast, episode 138. I'm your host, Jake Burke, and joined, as always, by James St. Charles and our forever guest, Ted Libby. What's happening? Ted, what are you playing? What are you playing right now? What's the game that's tickling your fingers? Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Okay. Right. All right. Okay. No, uh, okay. Right. Uh, still playing Diablo. Uh, I got back into Marvel Snap. Very oh briefly. God. That's, that's, that's why. Okay. Um, that's why. It's it's mostly because I also downloaded the Pokemon trading card game, which recently oh, got no. a, phone, a phone app. Okay. And is it I'm good? not. Uh, it's no. It's the card game, which I don't, turns out played the card game is kind of complicated and scary. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I got over. I got overwhelmed by it very quickly. Um, and so I went back to Marvel Snap because that's a game I understand. Nice. <laughs> All right. Well, there it is. Thanks, thanks for saying that. But enough about Ted's Gaming Podcast because this is the 138th episode of the Sidescape Gaming Podcast where every Monday morning a new episode goes live on YouTube.com and sometimes it goes up on Spotify every so often. Uh, Ted, how are we doing on posting this? Oh, we're a week behind. Two weeks behind. Sweet. Okay. Well, once a week we yeah. Discord over 500 miles talk about a gaming-related topic and what games we are playing this week. We're talking about Microsoft. We're talking about the FTC and their review of the Activision deal for over $60 billion to uh, acquire all of Activision. We sent out our best field reporter. We took James St. Charles. We gave him a briefcase. We gave him a pen. Ted gave him some shoes. And he went out to New York, probably. That's probably where they were. No, they're in San Francisco. San Francisco? Are they? Okay, Mm -hmm. I was there then. James was there. (laughs) We sent him. Not too far. James, you went out there as our beat reporter. You have some yeah. th- some stuff to talk about to kind of inform us on this, and then we have larger things to talk about because a lot of stuff has come to fruition as you know Jim Ryan right. and a bunch of Sony people as well, and Bobby Kota came out and talked in front of the FTC. I got the scoop, and but mostly from Tom Warren from The Verge, who is fantastic. Mm-hmm. That, that dude's probably broken like everything about this case. He has like the de facto article. In fact, I think today the expert, the economics expert that they had, the doctor, mm. was referencing a Verge article. Wow. that like i think he wrote or like that like he like worked for like the nvidia deal or something like that anyways uh so we're gonna be we're gonna be going over this case what is it why do you care about it what's happened today just concluded the fourth day and there's five days of testimony that the ftc is hearing by the time the show goes they, up it'll all be right. done the five days will it'll be all done. be done and i don't i don't know if there'll be a decision that'll be made by then so maybe maybe it'll wait a while but this is pretty critical, and actually Microsoft wanted this, so they're really happy that FTC uh, basically wanted to hear them out. And I think, yeah, they, they, of course, you know, blocked the merger, but they want to hear why. So this is perfect, because mm-hmm. Microsoft can, like, show with their lawyers, like, why they're doing this, or why it's not, like, unfair. So the case is Microsoft Activision Blizzard in the matter of competition, <laughs> merger... And gaming. Those are the three sort of like areas that they're allowed to talk about. They have a judge. It's the FTC. It's Microsoft. It's Sony and Nintendo for some reasons there. Uh, I guess they have to be there. They're part of the competition. Uh, yeah. But mainly it's Microsoft. There are a lot of Microsoft CFOs, the CEO, Xbox, uh, PlayStation CEO, Jim Ryan's there. Jim Ryan's there. Um, Bobby Kotick from yeah, Activision. Bobby Kotick. Yeah. So you have all the major players part of this deal or in terms of like affected by this deal. Yep. So a really good case. So the case summary is the Federal Trade Commission authorized an administrative complaint against the proposed merger between Microsoft Corp and Activision Blizzard. I don't know who did the complaint. I want to say it's Sony. But we'll see. Uh, A video game developer that creates and publishes games such as Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Diablo, and Overwatch. Those are the games they highlighted. So uh, here's the Storm fans. Sorry, Hearthstone fans. Sorry, <laughs> your games did uh, not make the cut. Yes, yeah, they didn't. They weren't on the top list. But anyways, those are like definitely their. Four they didn't mention games. Crash Team Racing or anything. I just think that's kind of weird. That's just kind of <laughs> no, funky. Oh, okay. No, no yeah. Spyro. No Spyro. None, none, none of the other Activision IP. Yeah. It's all about mainly the Blizzard IP for some reason. Yeah. Uh, and the Call of Duty, but. I'm gonna say yeah, James sorry. just. Uh, this might be a lot about Call of Duty. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Especially <laughs> with today's news. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so then it goes on to say that Microsoft sells the Xbox gaming console. That's what they said. And also offers a video game subscription service called Xbox Game Pass. We talk about it all the time. It's one of the mm-hmm. best things ever. Um, as well as a cloud-based video game streaming service. They didn't mention the xCloud. They just said a cloud-based. So that, that's very yeah, that's vague. Yeah, that's xCloud, but, yeah. Oh, well. 
The agency alleges that the deal would enable Microsoft to suppress competitors to its Xbox gaming consoles and its rapidly growing subscription and cloud gaming business. And and then it just tells you when the hearing starts. That's that's basically the summary. Okay. So someone complained to the FTC, mm-hmm. rightfully so. Um, and now we are getting four days, or we have been getting five days, sorry, five days of testimony from Microsoft, from PlayStation. Uh, we're getting a video testimony tomorrow, I think, from Nintendo. I don't know who. Do you think it has the two some... Snap guys and they do this to like during the transition? I don't, I don't think no, so. It's I think it's some, some, it's some nobody. Like I don't oh. even think what's his name Bowser is is that was even yeah. part of this. But I don't know if Nintendo's really caring about this at the moment. But we'll see. Uh, they're so... they're affected by a lot of the the Activision games that we were just joking about the crashes and spirals and everything that <clears throat> if it becomes exclusive stuff they're losing out on business as well. So I'm sure they're involved in that kind of system right that's why i think we know it's probably playstation who did sony Mm -hmm. who who did the the complaint because you we found out today how much money they'd be losing yeah Uh, (laughs) and but you know it's 68.7 billion that microsoft is spending and of course uh the way uh phil spencer like talked about it how what it what you're not really buying you're moving assets. So mm-hmm. it's not really like, hey, I'm putting down 68.7 billions. It's you're moving assets to acquire a bigger organization. That's what that's what it works. So and I, I don't know, there's some FTC people who really don't understand like what's going on. They need to they need to catch up, but some people definitely ask some good questions and we ha- we heard a lot about it. So um I guess do you want to just go through what happened each day and then we'll we'll maybe we'll touch on certain things. Yeah, I think yeah, before you do that, I think there's a few things to kind of note is the, the one thing is this is like the biggest tech acquisition of all time. So right. this, this isn't like a small thing. I do believe that Microsoft has till the middle of July to close the deal and to get it through all the regulatory boards or else it's. So this seems really late in terms of like having this hearing because, mm-hmm. yeah, this has been this has been known for a long time. Yeah, I think this, this is the this final deal has been known for a long time. So, yeah, so you're right. They have till July 18th, I believe. Yeah, um, I think that's what it is to get to get this closed i i don't think that's going to be a solid date i actually don't think they'll have time i mean they might probably extend it There'll yeah be and extension. That's business also there's a fee extensions. for extending it as well it's three billion <laughs> so um that's a lot of money <laughs> or they're going to renegotiate so we'll see um yeah, yeah. uh anything, anything else or no let's go through it uh, okay. day by day and then we can kind of talk more as stuff comes up um because i have some stuff throughout the PlayStation documents that I found particularly interesting about. Yeah, so I, I, I want to speed everything and... up to the this today. Okay. Because this I think today is the most important day. Mm-hmm. Everything else has been minor compared to what we we what was revealed today, especially from Sony. Yeah. Accidentally. <laughs> so, yeah, um, yeah, that was really yeah. interesting. But yeah, go through a little quickly, yeah. maybe quick day by day. So, kind of thing. so first day, uh, these haven't been in order. They I think they had a break. So the first day, they had a uh, they had testimony from xbox game studios chief matt booty mm-hmm. uh and then he talks about that was when there was a sony email that came out talking about like the deal and all that and they called it a bombshell even but it, it didn't really like I, I feel like emails like that are just like kind of like hey you're, you're gonna talk smack about your competition and there's something that's gonna like be like eh, this is you know this is yeah. what microsoft's doing i don't really like think it's good like of course there's gonna be something like that so i don't think it's a bombshell email that we see like that the email essentially about. worded was like the essential word was like, this isn't going to hurt us or anything right? Like, in response right. to the deal. So like that was that what that was that what evidence they were pointing out. I was like, you see, even Sony said it's not going to hurt us. Um, uh, yeah. And I'm like, all conjecture. you could, you could, you could say something when you don't know the full details. Exactly. And I, I don't think they should be yeah. using that as full evidence, which I don't know what they will. Um, that's, that was mainly like the first day, uh, day two was a good day. Cause that was when, uh, Xbox chief, Bill Spencer took the stand and he was there for like hours. Yes. Talking about like so many different things. And of course he's great. Like he, he thrives in that environment. That's what he wanted. He was talking about competition uh, with like the console wars and they were saying like they're third. Mm-hmm. They're, they are third. That's not, that's true. So, so this doesn't put them to first. So this was the interesting thing I think from this, from this day, from day two with yeah. Spencer on the stand. 
the pledge, and then I love that it says, you know, the, the little article that it was in a dramatic moment on Friday. But Spencer, Phil Spencer told the judge um, who ruled on the preliminary injunction that he vowed to keep releasing Call of Duty on PlayStation. These are actual quotes. You're testifying under oath that you will do that, the judge asked. Absolutely, Spencer said. I would raise my right hand and I would do whatever it takes. So yep. he, and then and then a few more questions went on and on, and then finally the judge said, you know what, we're we're moving past this. Like I don't even think this shouldn't be a part of the argument. So I thought that was kind yeah, of interesting. Yeah. But so the judge has been very fair, and I, I like that because yeah, this is Ted the or yeah, this is the FTC yeah. questioning Phil. It's not really the judge questioning. So I think that's to clear think, things up. Do you think there's some crazy shenanigans going on here where like Phil Spencer gets promoted to head of Microsoft and then all of his promises no, are no, now no, void no, no. or like they now just Phil, fire Phil Spencer and then they're like well he no. said it that doesn't speak for us yeah Phil Phil is like really ingrained with Xbox and I think oh they've been doing really well with numbers and Game Pass again like they're like they're saying of course it's doing really well their cloud streaming service uh I think even Sony said like it, it's it's they believe their cloud streaming is like 2025 ish and i agree maybe it's around 2025 when things start taking off technology isn't quite there but nvidia is really helping with that mm -hmm. in terms of like servers and that that route uh, but uh yeah in in terms of that day yeah that was that was a big thing with the judge exchange they were talking about like buying zynga yep. for their mobile uh good thing i didn't do that is this yeah. where they talked about all the other tra the targets that they were thinking about buying well they 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 talked about uh no that that that, that goes into probably I think day three day four okay okay, okay. but uh but uh it also talked about like why they did bethesda purchase and they did bethesda purchase because uh they learned that starfield might just be a playstation exclusive and they yes. didn't want that yes so that Which, is pretty interesting so yeah so there's a few things there that i remember that came out of that where um they did talk about how phil spencer did engineer a deal to remove uh starfield from coming to sony so they were able to basically get it and pull it away from sony um, and yeah. that's a thing where um, Sony lawyers or you know the commission pointing out that well they did do this with, with Bethesda they are steal they are taking games that were multi platform and bringing them to just their platform and so they'll do the same with Call of Duty and that's yeah. like the big I actually don't even think Sony truly believes Call of Duty won't be on PlayStation but we'll talk more about no. that later I, I think uh, Day Three pretty much like Day Three was the testimony from the from Jim yeah. Ryan from Sony PlayStation's chief. And like I said, they had some NVIDIA executive and some economic experts. We don't care about those. But but um but he was talking about how uh the, there was negotiations between Microsoft over Call of Duty and all this, and they only basically had like one more guaranteed game. So they're fighting for, hey, we don't just want your word, we probably want new contract for maybe like, you know, I don't know, maybe mm. next ten years of so because all the contract negotiations were with Activision Blizzard. Now yeah. what are our contract negotiations with Microsoft? Microsoft's their direct competitor. You're you're negotiating with it's like you know it's like Apple negotiating with with Microsoft like sort of right, that's yeah. the that's the comparison and that's that's what it is. It's like yeah, mm -hmm, you have like our OS <laughs> that we need because Call Call of Duty, uh, you know everyone plays Call of Duty and we we learned today that definitely Call of Duty is worth a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah keep, so, keep going. We got we got a lot to do yeah. through. So that was day three. Day four today is where they had a lot of uh they had bobby Kodak take the stand um they had the microsoft ceo uh satya mm -hmm. who was also took the stand um they had nvidia's jeff fisher not really sure who uh who who he, what he was talking about he was talking about like certain things and then they had the doctor that then the guy I was telling you about the well, economic expert N nvidia would be potentially hurt if xbox takes over okay. the cloud gaming space. That's really good because Nvidia said that they were against it initially, but mm -hmm. then the, I think I don't know if it was this year or soon, they signed certain agreements that games that would be coming from to Game Pass would also be going to GeForce Now. They had like some GeForce Now agreement. Mm -hmm. So they're actually kind of like collaborating in the cloud gaming space. Mm -hmm. So now Nvidia is like much more happier with the deal. That's interesting. So before they weren't uh Bobby Kodak is actually not a fan at all of Game Pass. He hates Game Pass. Of course he he's not a fan of the, yeah because yeah. he wants but, money but he was like i don't really care because i'm gonna be done with this if it goes I'm through so fired the second this my goes opinion through. on whether i like it or not doesn't matter really that's that's what he was like yeah. saying so um that's that's basically all the four days i think uh jake and i really want to get into the, the meat of all of the documents that have been the redacted documents that were supposed to be redacted that shows 
how much Call of Duty is worth. Yep. That shows how much money Sony is putting into their IPs, which is pretty insane, I think. Uh, and uh, why this is a bigger deal than than uh, Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard because it is going to directly hurt Sony. Yes. And there needs to be. I think what what's going to come from this, FTC is probably going to rule like, okay, you're you're going to be able to buy Activision Blizzard, but you are going to have to have like a forced contract with Sony to guarantee certain games on well, Sony consoles and support uh, it. That's what I think. Yeah. Why will Sony be hurt by this? Okay. What what okay. in the documents? Okay. Like, so uh, imbued that. Do you have it, Jake, or do you want me to read so it? So I I don't have the document in front of me, so I'm curious what you're going to say, but I want to know just yeah. everyone's take really quick on Call of Duty. This is the main argument here is is primarily Call of Duty and what it will do for Game Pass down the line. Um what do you feel about Call of Duty? Do you ever see it being an Xbox exclusive game? Is it just Game Pass, you know, on Game Pass always? What is that Call of Duty thing that Sony you think is Sony so afraid of and why it's going to hurt them so? And then I, we can I don't off. I don't think there is Xbox is definitely not aiming for a console exclusive because mm-hmm. they technically own two markets. They own PC and Xbox. And I don't think they're really into the console exclusives because anything that's Microsoft exclusive is also PC exclusive, yep. like PC game exclusive. So I think they should Sony should really be fighting like, hey, Microsoft owns two gaming markets and we only have one and Nintendo also only has one. Um, they could easily make like something. Hey, it's not exclusive to the Xbox because it's on PC. So th- there should definitely be something there uh, that Jim Ryan and of course Sony is rightfully protesting. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, you need we, need we don't want to be like pushed out of potentially like one of our biggest revenue drivers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tony, what do you think, any thoughts? Um, like what Sony is afraid of with yeah, Call like what do you what are you kind of thinking? Um, uh, I think that Sony is very scared of three to five years down the line when we're all thinking about our next console purchase, mm-hmm. and at that time, you know, there have been years and years of chit chat on the playground about like, bro, why are you playing? Why are you buying video games? Let yeah. me tell you about this subscription service that has Call of Duty for you. Um, you know why you're spending eighty bucks a game now? Because you know inflation. Yeah, <laughs> uh, eighty bucks a game uh, over there. You know why are you doing that? That's stupid. Come, come pay twenty bucks a month with me. Um, and so I, I think if Microsoft owns Call of Duty, they own the cards. You yeah. know, and it it becomes up to Sony to basically like grovel at Activision Microsoft's feet and say like, please put that DLC map pack on our platform, right? Please let us, you know, uh have i've given us an incentive cross cross play yeah um you know we've there has been 10 years at this point of like exclusive map packs things coming out first on one PlayStation, um and just because phil spencer promises that call of duty will be on playstation that doesn't mean anything no yeah that's what i was like like, when they were talking about the vows that means nothing yeah they could promise it'll be on playstation and literally just say call of duty is free if you have an xbox you don't even need game pass and that is you know, just that the fear of saying something like that is really scary to them because as I'm sure these documents show, Call of Duty means a lot to both of these companies. Um, yeah. There wouldn't be console gaming without Call of Duty. So I have this quote here, or I guess this, this, yeah, this, this, this sort of like cut from Sean Hollister of The Verge. Okay. Um, he says, Sony accidentally revealed how much money Call of Duty is worth to PlayStation. How they accidentally revealed it is they submitted some documents and everything was supposed to be redacted. But they used Sharpie, and when they scanned it, everything came through. Um, and they didn't actually use proper redaction format. Yep. Um, so, uh, so nothing that's was really redacted. Funny. Yeah. That's so, really funny. So basically... Like if you um, look close enough, Ted, you can see every word that's supposed to be... Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, have, they have a little picture number. of it. And now it's all gone. You can't look at it because the FTC like, made it public. But... Yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, PlayStation boss Jim Ryan's unredacted letter suggests COD represents $800 million in PlayStation revenue in the United States alone. Mm-hmm. And then they looked in the, a little bit more, because it's hard to read, and they said, I think it says $1.5 billion worldwide. In 2021, specifically. Just 2021. So they're saying that those players represent way more money to Sony than, I, like, than they initially thought. They, Ryan says COD players spend, what, looks to me like 15.9 billion dollars per year on average on everything else they buy yeah so uh right and, and then and, that, and then they found yeah yeah that is to my point right of like 
people who play Call of Duty spend money on other things on the PlayStation at with Sony. Right. Be it hardware, yeah, accessories, or... subscriptions, games, PlayStation exactly. services. Because you need PlayStation about. Plus, you need yeah. all of that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. they learned a, a large portion. I, I can't I don't have the number here for some reason. I think it was like one point eight million, maybe more. PlayStation gamers only play Call of Duty. Two million. Mm-hmm. Two million. Okay, two, million like two million PlayStation players only play Call of Duty every year. It's a significant portion of their player base and consoles in terms of like that's units, that's money, that's that's be gonna be if let's say like you removed all that, that's gonna be missing from Sony. And of course they're gonna have a big problem with that. Yeah. So, and no, and uh, no matter what, if Microsoft Microsoft putting Call of Duty on Game Pass is like it just drives everything towards Game Pass. I mean yep. it drives two million people towards those two million people that just play call of duty on playstation because their buddies play it on playstation they don't know better like mm-hmm. Ted was saying the minute you hear i can pay 20 bucks a month and i just get to play call of duty on on my on my tv because it's an app mm-hmm. like that yeah. playstation can't compete they have to become like that you know hard kind of third party action game or third person action game that storytelling device rather than like the big multiplayer thing they have to shift their strategy entirely and you can already see that with sony trying to go more multiplayer centric buying bungie and n- not showing the last of us game until it's ready even though like you know that game has been announced for a while they've pulled that back so i think that's really just kind of what they're afraid of is this future where it's just easier right. to play the biggest game ever on my and, TV. and then and then just to go off that we also learned how much money they're putting into their games and their employees mm-hmm. and i think we don't we don't have Microsoft numbers because they didn't submit theirs. No, but I think Sony is putting way more money into their AAA games than Microsoft ever has. Uh, they're they're putting in uh, the the estimates or at least the costs. Horizon Forbidden West, mm-hmm. two hundred twelve million over five years. Three hundred uh, employees working yeah, on it. Three hundred employees. Yeah. Last of Us Part Two. Uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me. But also like two hundred something million. Two hundred twenty million with two hundred employees. Working for that's, uh, that's seventy months, seventy same time. months. This yeah. is not like different different years. These these are at the same time. These, yeah. these this money is being spent. Um, that's just two so, studios. God of War Ragnarok, yeah. I'm sure was also. Uh, they, I think there. they had Ragnarok as well. It was also. Oh, like, did they? I didn't miss that. A couple hundred million as well. Yeah. yeah, they. Again, so much information came out. It was just what I was telling Jake earlier. I was like, "There's just too much. Like a lot of stuff got spilled today." And um, I think the writings on the wall that Sony spends a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Good. Mm-hmm. They also need a lot of money from the Activision games to, to generate, to, right. to, to kind of provide you with these great console exclusives. Um, yeah. And that's their business model. Not yeah. to say that console exclusives are like a good or a bad thing. Like that's Sony's business. And when you are fucking with their business, uh, they're going to have a problem with it. And that's why this is happening. And I, so I think this is, even though it wasn't supposed to be leaked and it all got leaked, I think it's actually a good thing. I think you're going to have... Uh, the a uh, just case here for possibly something shifting or renegotiating with the Activision Blizzard uh Microsoft buyout. I think it's going to still happen, but I think it's going to be with FTC is going to be like, "Okay, we're going to prove this, but here's the hmm. but like we're going to have you know, Call of Duty guaranteed for PlayStation or certain services, all Activision Blizzard services guaranteed for PlayStation, like all these like little things that'll be that'll have to be like protected just to keep fair trade now nintendo yeah. hasn't really been mentioned at all I, I, I do you have anything with nintendo at all no i think a lot of like what nintendo drives from is just them being affected by also this kind of cloud gaming network on on games that would also go to them from activision so i, I was going to say the same thing of like if N- nintendo is continuing down this path of being the portable gaming device cloud gaming is there to kill it um yeah. i don't need a switch if i can play video games on my phone <laughs> Right. Like, right. like, like, you know what I mean? Like, like first party. If I can play Tears um, of the Kingdom on my phone, I don't need a Switch. Right. right. Um, but I think, James, to your point about some kind of concessions being made, I think, and I could totally see the FTC kind of completely missing the point by saying, like, we'll allow it, but you have to keep Call of Duty on the PlayStation. Um, because that's not really the problem, right? The problem is that people will stop buying PlayStations, and when they do, they they lose the entire ecosystem of what PlayStation is making. You know, that for yep. B- Horizon Forbidden West, gone. Not on the table because I don't own a PlayStation. Um, and that, I think, is the real concern that I think the FTC might miss if yeah. they're well, not in touch. Um, the FTC is so out of touch that they don't think Nintendo is a player at all. 
and Microsoft, I guess, every well, day has to well, has to say well, that you know, they are the they're the number like yeah. everyone's buying the Switch. We're, yeah, James, we're not arguing. Everyone's buying the, latest game. We're not arguing about the Luigi or the Luigi's Mansion franchise. <laughs> Um, Tears of the Kingdom, uh, two but, million but player. N- listen, N- Nintendo calls themselves a toy company. They don't call themselves yeah. like a video game tech that's company. Like they even yeah, classify themselves very but differently. Um, to to put them as a competitor though, it strengthens Xboxes. Like, right. hey, we're we're third. Yeah. Or like, you know, hey, we're right. this is not right. going to put us as like a monopoly They're, number well, one. And that's yeah. something that we haven't really talked about. But the, but a lot of what was said by Phil Spencer and everything on the stand was like like admitting they've lost the console war like like really positioning themselves of like we are microsoft yeah. and we are really behind and this would help yeah. us try to catch up um yep. and that's a lot of their play they actually also weirdly brought up the fact that the ps3 ps2 ps3 ps4 all outsold them and kind of even played that ps3 xbox 360 generation uh differently than how it was saying that like yep. sony's always had dominance we're like no the xbox 360 had dominance that generation and then mm-hmm. PS3s right. became cheap, and so everybody bought them at the end. I, I, yeah, and I, I can totally see that, that being kind of something of a ploy because mm-hmm. you're right. It's like the numbers don't speak for the cultural attitude of like the Xbox 360 was in almost every teenager's house yes. in that era. Hands I was down. weird that um, I had a PS3. Like that was right. weird. Yeah, yeah, right. And and I think it's also you know they talk about like oh we came in third. It's like well your money, your revenue stream isn't coming from your console anymore. Yeah. Like we're not factoring in everyone who plays on PC. Um, and so to talk about like, oh, we've lost the console war. It's like, well, that's not everything anymore. Yeah. And you've also it's kind a, of admitted a multi-front to not, battle. Yeah. yeah. You're not going after the console market really anymore either. Um, yeah. I just to throw this in here. What would you guys say to an FTC ruling? That was something along the lines of like, you have to make Game Pass your game service available to all consoles who want to play ball. So I... Um, We'll leave consoles to you guys figure that out. But the the service uh, we want to make accessible to everybody. What do you guys think about something like that? I think that's interesting. I Sony would never put Game Pass on PlayStation. Right. But- I, I think you're on to something. Though. What if it's like the streaming rights of Call of Duty? Like if you have your streaming rights of Call of Duty on Game Pass, they must be available for PlayStation to also procure those rights. Yeah. It, well, and similarly, like, you know, you could flip it and say, make PlayStation games available on the Xbox. But I don't think, and I am not a lawyer. I am not a lawyer. Um, I don't think Sony saying we're not going to do that mm-hmm. uh, is a good defense against it <laughs> of like, well, then, you know, FTC says, let Xbox come on to PlayStation. They say, no, yeah, this is our garden. We don't want them. <laughs> and it's like, well, that's, you're doing it to yourself at this point. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Would you, yeah, how would Game, game Pass be just like, another app on your PlayStation would be kind of interesting. Like a, like a, like a Netflix app yeah. of sorts. Um, and maybe there's something where like you can only use their cloud service streaming. So it's kind of shitty. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Just what um, I wanted. But, but like, right. Like open the, like, you know, avoid this console war business and just open up the service gate of like, make the service available. And yeah. you guys have nothing to argue about. You can fight about who has the better hardware. Yeah. That's interesting. I think you're I think you're on to something though where the streaming rights might be like that negotiating topic of yeah. how to get this passed is like so I think that's the really big thing is where this game can sit um in that streaming library or like, you know, the the games library now that they both offer. Um, right. With PlayStation Plus, Ultra Plus, Plus Plus Check and uh, Double Tap Plus. Um yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so I was I was reading this thing about basically like we were talking about Call of Duty basically being off PlayStation or it being on Game Pass so no one's buying it on PlayStation. PlayStation makes 30% of every game bought on their digital store as a commission. It's like the revenue of that, you know, 200 or 2 million people not buying Mm -hmm. Call of Duty on on their console. That's even alone is like catastrophic. Yeah. And and I I would imagine, uh, again, to the same point, um, they are worried about all of the other purchases that that Call of Duty player still buys. Yeah. Um, right? Because even if you buy in-game Call of Duty currency, which I don't know if there is, but I'm assuming there is. Oh, yeah, there's the even Call if, of Duty even, coins. Yeah, even if you buy COD coins, um, you, uh, Sony still is taking a cut. Coins of yeah. duty. They're the coins of duty. Nice. That's what they are. I was, try, I was trying to think of a good, what would fucking Call of Duty coins be Coins called? of duty. <laughs> I like coins Get of duty. Get your coins of duty here, soldier. Oh, boy. <laughs> Buy your they, leopard print AK-47, brother. 
All right. They were also <laughs> revealing that Microsoft was considering buying Square Enix. Yeah, Square Enix. That was huge. I was not expecting that. I was thinking Sony would buy that, but uh, uh I'm glad they didn't. Yeah, because they were they were they wanted Square Enix for their mobile brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, don't buy that. Right. They also were considering Sega. I would like Sega. Sega. We talked cool. about Sega with, with Xbox yeah. a lot. Yeah. And so Bungie, but Sega of course Bungie and was Xbox are very much in cahoots. Their games are available on Game Pass almost yeah. all the time. So I know. I so. Oh, Sega say, Double Dips. So Supergiant was also listed there. Supergiant and like two other companies were also on that that short list. Of I don't know if Supergiant would sell out though. Do we, That's we, what I was thinking. Yeah. I was like, yeah. hold strong, Supergiant. Uh, yeah, Super not, not after Hades. I think not after Hades. Oh, no, no. After yeah. they get their Hades, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Pyre, on the, X, Pyre on the Xbox would be pretty cool. <laughs> Pyre anywhere would be pretty fun. Just, just say, yeah. just say it. We'd we love to play Pyre. I love Pyre. Um, Make it online multiplayer. With this kind of motion, do you think this is going to pass? Do you think they're they're going to get through? Uh, I so I, th I think it'll go through. Like, I, I think, think so the FTC will rule, but that's why I'm, I'm thinking there's going to be some stipulations St yeah. or maybe some renegotiation of the contract. Or I, I don't expect the FTC to say actually, from what we've heard, this deal can't go through. It would be unfair. Um, I think what we're finding out is that like, hey, everyone's making a lot of money from the, these guys. Um what are we going to do about like who's making what money and like and how do we guarantee yeah. mm -hmm. that everyone is happy i think that they see is right now their job is to make everyone happy yeah. and not make it a uh, monopoly where microsoft controls everything and i think microsoft more than ever would not want that either as well like because phil's out there he's like saying hey hey we're, we'll, we'll we'll play ball like we'll get yeah but there's a reason like, they're doing this it's not just because it'd be nice to have call of duty you're trying to take down they're gonna a they're bit. gonna they're gonna want to compete um but yeah and sony has every right to be like mm, you know we're gonna fight mm -hmm. back and that's what that's competition it is um so yeah i'm looking forward to whatever happens with day five i think they're doing like no more document releases after today okay um yeah it's a it was a pretty pretty um, big fuck up before i speak uh what was said about cloud gaming uh everyone basically believes that it's like pretty far in the future even sony was saying like okay. they're, they're not they're so, not so it's just doing some anything vague futuristic tech mm -hmm. i think f um, the ftc and especially the uk as well are overestimating the power of cloud gaming mm -hmm. they really need to look at the stats of that you have a lot of failed cloud gaming services out there that um, especially with google that's yeah that's kind of um, i want to judge the tone of like where where do they because cloud gaming's not yeah they real. had a doctor. I mean, it uh, is real. It is. Like, yeah, it is. Like, 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 no. like, I, like, I played. I played Call. I guess I've played Gears of War. Oh, they're gonna say phone. Call of Duty. I'm like, that's it's, what they're no, worried no, no. about. It, <laughs> it's Gears not my at phone the briefly. demand. Yeah, yeah, and, and I went. This is neat, but there's some input lag, and I, I put it down. Like, you know, does anybody that you know of or yourselves cloud gaming? No, but no. It, it, and they even said that they had a doctor who was, of course, like an expert and everything, and he's like, yeah, it's it's it represents a small group now but in the future it will grow yeah um and i agree and i think that the ftc need to consider that because like this deal has implications not just for now but for the future well uh, so what yeah. and and i'm getting a little bit off topic no here, this is where we go what 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 does activision blizzard give to cloud gaming i know i know okay go Jake, for it. I pick you. i've been saying thank you james uh james and charles may i take the stand um no yeah, so so this We've been talking about this for a long time, and every every year we do our predictions episode, and I always predict that Xbox is going to reveal the, the Xbox app on your on your TV right. now. Right. Go yep. for it. Because eventually that's going to happen. Yeah. Eventually Game Pass is on your TV, and eventually Game Pass with Call of Duty is on your TV for $15 a month. You don't need a console. You don't even need to touch an, a PlayStation. Go mm -hmm. buy an Xbox controller, Bluetooth to your TV, and there you go, Call of Duty. So I think that's why they keep talking about cloud gaming, because it is the next step of gaming. It is yeah. the, it is where things are going for right. the masses. Well, yeah, w and what changes in this discussion if Microsoft works out a deal with Activision Blizzard, assuming they don't buy them, that says you know you still have to pay premium price for your Call of Duty game, but once you buy it, you can cloud game it. Uh, I think it's the fact that Sony, to try right. to achieve the same thing, wouldn't work through wouldn't work through Activision. They have to go straight to their competitor who goes eh. 
Not gonna right. Be, yeah, if, I think if, they're no, going to have I, such I, a sorry. leg up. I, I mean, if uh, Activision Blizzard is not bought by Microsoft, uh -huh. they're still a separate company. Um, but Microsoft says we have a very powerful cloud gaming future. Uh, we want all games that are available on Xbox to be available on cloud gaming. We want this to be a mandate. Suddenly, your purchase of Call of Duty this year is now on cloud gaming. Um, the results are still the same, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then that makes it a Game Pass issue. Or sorry, that makes it... Uh, I guess that would that make it a Game Pass issue? But I don't know if that that makes it the same. Like you're saying, the consumer would have to still buy it for seventy, but then they can cloud game it. Right on I, on Xbox, that is their ticket. I don't think that's the same because I think it's the Game Pass idea that also has Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. That oh, Call of Duty's there, and then all this other stuff's there. So like, even when I'm done with right. that, call, this year's Call of Duty, I'll play whatever I'm going to play through it, and then next year's Call of Duty is right on here yeah. again. So I think like buying the game, then you're buying it wherever your friend, well, friends are, where it doesn't matter anymore, but, I guess. Yeah, but crossplay, like, yeah. But that, that's, you know what I mean? Like the yeah. issue then becomes Game Pass, right? Because w it's not anti-competitive of Microsoft to say, if you buy a game no. under the Microsoft brand, under the Xbox brand, it's available for cloud gaming on your TV app. Mm -hmm. You don't even need a console. You just go on your phone, go to our Xbox app, which they don't have, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hit buy, uh, and then play it on your TV lickety split. You know, that's not anti competitive, which makes this a Game Pass problem. I think it is a game. I think it's a Game, Pla game Pass cloud gaming problem. Right. right. Eventually, when you don't need the hardware to run Game Pass mm -hmm. and Call of Duty's offered with it, you're, you're cutting out hardware and, mm -hmm. you're, and you're really cutting out PlayStation. Right. But what I'm saying, I guess what I'm trying to say is that might happen anyway. That will happen no matter what. But, but, it, yeah. but it won't happen you wanna, with the biggest so IP if, possible. Yeah, you want the IP to make it happen, if that makes sense. Yeah, and no, I, this I, I, guarantees that I, IP I, I, will not fall into... I, I totally some, understand, like, yeah. you own the IP. Right, but yeah. But, like, you know, as an argument of, like, does it matter if they own the IP or not? Yes. If there's some kind of condition that, play, that Call of Duty will always or continue to stay on PlayStation, and Microsoft is doing cloud gaming anyway... Like, it matters that it, if was, that's make it kind of a null argument. No, but it matters if well, it, no one said that that's what they have to do because now they're doing that. Now they're playing ball because of course FTC is involved. But they could have just easily been like, actually, yeah, that's your last Call of Duty game. Uh, from now on, Call of Duty is going to be on Xbox and PC. Right. I guess. Yeah. I guess that is true. Now, but now they're probably going to be like, actually, yeah, we'll sign an agreement. But they're still going to be working on their cloud service, and they're probably going to make it number one. We'll see. I think there's going to be a big partnership with NVIDIA and cloud, maybe even a merger, maybe even like something like there. It seems like NVIDIA, of course, has like the horsepower and their yeah. stock has been skyrocketing like crazy. Like, because yeah, I think when you think about the future, it's going to be big data centers in all the major towns with the lowest latency of probably like less than 10 milliseconds of everyone being able to boot up their favorite game. Plugging in your controller, you're going to have whatever Wi-Fi 8, Wi-Fi 9, whatever like the biggest Wi-Fi connection yeah. is, and it's going to be seamless. You're going to have such low latency that you wouldn't even notice it. Right now, there is noticeable latency for non-single-player games, mm -hmm. I mean, for, 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 uh, for multiplayer games. And that's why they got rid of uh, Call of Duty. On, it, Call of Duty was on GeForce Now as like a beta program, and it was the most popular. But yeah. of course, it has like latency issues. And I've even tried like with the, the Steam Deck and you can stream it to your PC and that still has some latency issues. But for single player, it's pretty one to one. So when they say 2025, they expect some some moves. I don't think that's far off. It may be a little bit lo longer than that. But uh, there is yeah. like this happening right now and, and all concerns. Sony has every right to be concerned. And like what you're saying, Ted, is is like. Why does this matter? Like, if they get this or not? Well, no, no, no. Uh, specifically in regards to cloud gaming, and I'll, yeah. I'll take mm -hmm. it from another angle of like, let's say the, It'd be FTC, the biggest cloud game in all of the world. Well, like, let's say the FTC or says something weird, like you can't buy them for the next two years. We'll readdress it in two years, um, and then somebody at Sony Development misses the memo and keeps making their cloud gaming. And in 2025, PlayStation has a pretty kick-ass cloud gaming service. Then what? Do, then is it okay for Microsoft to to buy Activision if Sony had a better cloud gaming service? I don't think that would happen, though. I just think right. Sony is so right. far it, behind. It, well, that, yeah, but uh, like they're, they're if, just if, no worries. If we assume that they aren't, and they do have, they come out with yeah. a good cloud gaming service. Doesn't that also like? Does that make it okay to for Microsoft to own Activision Blizzard? That's what they're deciding. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's men that's smarter than us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, well, well, they're paid more than us. That's, that's true. That's what it comes down to. We're three guys on the internet. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think um, in closing, uh, Master Chief and Cod. Yeah, <laughs> Master Chief and Cod. That's all we need. Uh, Him fighting face. Godzilla is all the Call of Duty I've ever wanted to play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, my, I will say, I think it is very telling. And, and I'm, I'm wondering if kind of the FTC will notice this, that even though Microsoft has got on the stand and said, oh, we're losing, you know, woe is me. Um, PlayStation, it seems, has had to completely change their entire game plan around what is happening. Yes. They, they clearly rushed out some kind of cloud gaming device that nobody's excited for. That mm-hmm. <laughs> looks really bad. Um, they, um, I'll just say they impulse bought Bungie. I don't know if that's true, but <laughs> that was a good buy. It, that, that's that's how the, they my, my favorite and, impulse buy. Yeah, yeah, and then and uh, they and bought suddenly, it because Xbox is interested. I'd say right, and that's suddenly they are they are tasking Bungie with making a new multiplayer focus game. Like they, yeah. they are do they are having to combat Microsoft at every turn. Um, and so I, it's I, pretty. It's pretty yeah. obvious that Microsoft is holding cards. Um, and I think even if they are not allowed to buy Activision Blizzard. Uh, they will still try and buy other people. Yes. <laughs> they will continue doing this. Um, and I would think we'll see a PlayStation that is having to play catch up just by being the smaller ship. If this deal doesn't go through, which I'd be very surprised if it didn't, uh, Microsoft is going to buy up a bunch of small studios. I, I was going to say, I bet. I bet Sony does. I, I bet Bobby Kotick scuttles the ship and they just start selling off Activision Blizzard piecemeal. That would uh, be I, an interesting. So thing. I would be curious if after if say this fails, say like yeah. the FTC is like absolutely not. What if Microsoft then goes okay, but we'd like to buy Blizzard? Yeah, that's what I think is going to mm-hmm. happen. Yeah, I I, I think they see... want Blizzard stuff too badly. They want that oh, IP for their for their Game Pass yeah. by a mile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah, I, they I have mean, you put you put Blizzard games back in China. You got billions of dollars just sitting yep. there. Right, right, right. Uh, I I I think you're absolutely right. I predict. This is still the end of Activision Blizzard. I think those people want to pay out, mm-hmm. um, and they're going to get it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Other other people are going to buy these products piecemeal if this whole thing doesn't go through. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I'm very yeah, I'm very excited to see what Microsoft does with Blizzard products in general. Right. Um, that's like I think the thing I'm most intrigued by about this whole thing that I have been since we kind of talked about this what two years ago. But um, so I'm very excited about that part. If this goes through, what Blizzard becomes under Microsoft with like. I think is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, uh, I think it's hundred percent going through and um, just, it's only a matter of time. And I, and I really believe that once that happens, we're going to see a lot of other studios be bought up. Um, yep. I think Square Enix will be bought probably by the end of the year, or at least Sony just, should buy them. I think it'll be Sony. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's a Yeah. FF16 probably I don't, doing some I don't great really, numbers. I don't really know if this is a relevant thing to talk about, yeah. but what happens if, Sony that just goes ahead and buys a a company while this is happening, like they can do. Do, it. do you guys think Square Enix is just not as important? No. Yeah, they're not. It's 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 yeah. it's the Square Enix is probably what four, maybe three billion, two billion, maybe. But but Sony isn't buying Activision Blizzard. Yeah, it's the sixty eight billion. It's the it's the yeah. yeah. It's that, they that's what they they cannot spend. They cannot transfer that many assets from Sony. Sony is not worth that much. Yeah. Uh, Sony, I'd say, is probably worth like a third of what Microsoft is worth. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, according to, a, well, oh, okay, never mind. Not yet. I was like, okay, I, uh, Square Enix is worth uh, eight billion dollars. Okay, according that to one right. internet search. That's that's that sounds it's, right. it's, It says eight hundred billion, and I was like, what? It's yen. Yen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So yeah, eight, that, eight billion or so. Yeah, okay. and of course, of course, like a lot of Japanese companies probably are not selling the yen as pretty bad mm-hmm. dollars are pretty strong right now compared comparatively um so sony buying up its other japanese companies makes sense microsoft buying them up as well could could be big that's why it's like say, them buying sega would be really interesting uh yeah that, um yeah the only reason i think square yeah. enix with playstation is they have such close relationships with them still and like like fs16 is only on playstation yeah. um it's not pc right. eventually eventually but it's not right away that's crazy they could um, they could buy Square Enix right now and be like, nope, we're canceling the PC port. Yep. Uh, but I think right now PlayStation has such a good relationship right now with uh, PC, and uh, not particularly with Microsoft, but of course they have to deal with Microsoft. You know, there's another thing like because they're bringing the games to a PC. Yes. Yeah. But uh, 
you know they're coming to Steam, and of course they're double dipping and making making good money, releasing their games a couple of years yeah. later. Sony is really interested in that, mm-hmm. uh, so I yeah, think they still I, want to protect that as well. I'm I'm st- I'm artificially extending this conversation, but uh, ha- did the PC come up at all? In no, these, not in really. these last four days. PC, not at all? I think Xbox is doing a great job about putting the focus on their console. I think so. And well, not on was, that PC say, Game Pass did, did, is a big. Did anybody bring up that like PC is a even playing field? And these console wars don't matter because you have a revenue stream on a PC that both both parties can access. Well, I guess not Nintendo, but they don't care. No, PC hasn't. I don't even think anyone from PC has been represented. No, Gabe Newell. No, <laughs> from all no, of like, PC. Yeah, yeah, all. Yeah. who represents the, PC? exactly? PC can't not be represented. <laughs> but you would definitely say like Microsoft is PC gaming. Mm-hmm. They they have the majority of PC gamers using their platform, their their OS all that um right but so i don't know why that's sony, not sony sells stuff on there of course yeah. so it's, it's it's a fair playing field in that sense well they could eat sony i mean microsoft could easily be like actually no we're not we're not gonna support any sony games but they couldn't they could easily steam do does they, that right they they can steam do that. steam would support it and of course that's why steam has its own os yeah because they they yeah everyone's playing the bet battlefield pretty well because they're reading the writing on the wall is like you cannot have one company owning like all the operating systems for yeah. every game that's why they want linux to succeed so much and linux has been pretty poor because they have to deal with nvidia and all these other like getting getting everything working is a pain so steam is really taking the forefront and being like hey we have this steam os and we're trying to get all the games just working on mm-hmm. the steam deck so right now you can't really use Game Pass on Steam Deck, but I I feel like eventually you will be able That's to do gotta that. That's got to happen. On it. Yeah, yeah. And once that does, yeah. that that just that becomes everything. When I will love the Steam Deck. Happens. Yeah. I also I also don't know if Microsoft can, like, and I because I don't even know how this would function if if Microsoft makes the decree that PlayStation games aren't allowed on Windows. They wouldn't do that. <laughs> There's no because way they of, could do that. They they they, they wouldn't do that, but. But I also think they, they could. couldn't do that. What they would could. they do? Install a Windows they, they would, patch they would, that just they would not support the EXE file from starting? They could just that not, they'll amazing. say, we'll not support it. Like, you could put it out, but they'll just say, hey, well, we won't support it. So if there's like a Windows right. bug that breaks it, it's like, oh, well, that's your, on yeah, you to fix I, it. I, I, yeah, and, and Microsoft owning the operating system underneath the PC didn't come up at all in, mm. in these discussions? No, no, no. Because, no. cause, you know, I'm going to flip sides here and say, James, you're absolutely right. Why doesn't Microsoft just say, PlayStation, get get the fuck out of here? <laughs> Windows well, is mine. I, I think um, there's definitely like this this butting of heads between Sony and PlayStation right now, and um, we'll we'll see what comes of the, these talks. If things go bad for Microsoft here, like of course they could they could probably like throw some more shade at Sony. I think yeah. I think that both parties have equally like thrown shade at each other in terms of like what their tactics are for each other. Um, they're both gatekeeping certain exclusives Mm -hmm. from each other, like Starfield and all that stuff. So it's it's a it's definitely a writing on the wall where it's like, hey, you know, no, I'm gonna have mine over here. You're gonna have yours over here, and eventually they just separate. Which is it's kind of sad for all gamers, I'd say, because I like this moment when we were like having a lot of parity between like certain games coming to each console and uh, certain things happening. Gaming felt pretty good. Uh, now it seems like a lot of the money is shifting, and FTC, rightfully so, getting involved and trying to figure this all out. And they're 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 way behind. They yep. they do not have the knowledge. The FTC I, I was chairmen say, that are questioning are complete. We've spent Lee 40, lacking forty five minutes discussing this, and we didn't even talk about the last time Microsoft was here, struggling over are they a monopoly? Because Microsoft's yeah, monopoly. already been in this position. Yep. There are a lot of people who remember the late 90s as being a very dark time for the computer um, when Microsoft just held all the keys and was saying, go fuck yourself to anybody else. We didn't even talk about that. That's a whole other episode. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I'm intrigued. There I, is, I, we'll know yeah. soon. This was big today, though. Or, yeah. And the, this whole hearing in general is huge for anyone in gaming or especially in the gaming news space because so much was revealed. Especially on Sony's, uh, <laughs> I can't believe that Sony's practice, which is yeah, Sony. Sony doesn't know how to redact anything. <laughs> no. Yeah, but you know it's expected. You know how much money they're spending, but like to get the exact numbers and like be like, damn. Well, and the exact development time, I thought quarter was billion, seventy quarter billion months. each game, like years, six, six that years, yeah. right? Like that's seventy months. So they're yeah. they're they're writing that like 
FIFA transactions that uh, Call of Duty revenue yeah. each each year does sort of float their yeah. their yeah. big IPs that I, come out, and of course they generate more money than they put yeah. in. But uh, yeah, yeah, I this will be a discussion for another time. But I I do wonder if video games have kind of gotten too big for their britches, where like I, I we forgot, knew this happened. I forgot who said it, and I apologize for misquoting them. But they uh, were talking about how like there's a projection that like video game development might hit a 10 year mark fairly soon. Yeah. Here. Jason Trier has yeah. been saying that for a long time. Corey, yeah, Corey, and, Corey Barlog said that as well. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, yeah, I think it was Corey who said, I think that's what oh, yeah, we were talking would, about this on the podcast. Yeah. It was yeah, like, he, and, and he was like lamenting, like I miss the days when yeah. video yeah. games could come out at In a reasonable time. But right. People, he says, he says, I, he says like, I hate the days that's going to be like, yeah, 10 year people, cycles. people spend I don't their whole, there. their whole career making two to three games. Um, that could happen. Yeah, I and I wonder if we will see kind of a, I don't want to call it a collapse, but like a, a condensation. Or you see um, an inverse where AI just takes over and just makes the game in like a week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Be nice, I guess. No, we don't want that. We don't want that, Ted. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, I it's, think we should it's put AI in, in charge of defense systems. Yeah, I think that's a... Like, like, a, just, like a just... network for the sky. Ooh. Okay. Please no AI hear me, in defense hear systems. Hear me out. Hear me out. I like All this. Right. What would you call it? Net sky? I think I was thinking Netsky. Yeah, Netsky. That's, that's, that's already that's, 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 that's already that's yeah. already a name. All right, we'll yeah. take Skynet. Yeah, Skynet's oh. probably all right. Probably all right, number two option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. T one thousand, baby. Um, no, I think that's a great conversation topic, Ted. I would love to talk about it. Like, are video games too much? Because because <laughs> I'm kind of hitting that's that with like what a question. That's a great. The video question. games are too damn high. <laughs> too much now. Um, yeah, because like I think when you read Jedi Survivor, we felt that a little bit. I love Final Fantasy sixteen, but like. It's just not an RPG at all, and it's so weird yeah. that it's like an RPG. Are you ready to talk about you it? Know, we did, we did the, Jake, do you want to talk about it? or? No, it's like we're, in 50, we're like 52 minutes in. I'll talk about it. I'll talk, I can talk all day okay. about FTC. Do you like it? <laughs> I know, I haven't played it. Oh, I, said, I said FTC. Oh, FTC. FTC no, we're, yeah, we're FTC yeah, yeah, yeah. 16. We're I thought you were talking about yeah, Final Fantasy. About but we'll talk about Final Fantasy 16 next time. We'll talk about if okay. games are just too much. Um, <laughs> any final thoughts on the FTC, James? I know you, you could talk about it all day. Uh... I guess we'll hear more tomorrow, and we'll hear the ruling. Once once we do hear the ruling, I think we'll we'll just have like a mini thing. Yeah, uh, we'll do another just thing to on mention this. Mention it. Probably not going to as detail as we did here, but uh, yeah, really important. I think everyone has their eyes on this, rightfully so, and uh, we shall see. We shall see. Thank you so we much for watching the 138th episode of the Sidekick Gaming Podcast. My name is Jake. That's James. That's Ted, and we will see you next week. <laughs>